in the beginning, I have to uh, introduce today uh, our honorable uh, presenter, Professor uh, Chiming Pu as well. Good morning and good evening. Uh, I am P.Y. Cho and my colleague, uh, Junior Tu, uh, will moderate this webinar today. So welcome uh, to ICC webinar. Professor Chi Min Pu has graduated from China Medical University College of Medicine, Taiwan, and earned his PhD at the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology, College of Medicine, National Taiwan <coughs> University. Currently, Professor Pu is the Deputy of the Department of Surgery at Kasi General Hospital. Professor Pu has dedicated himself in the research at the field of tissue engineering, adipose tissue, stem cell research, and exosome research. Lowe's works contributed numerous publications to plastic surgery. Besides, Professor Pu devoted himself to Taiwan Society of Plastic Surgery as the Secretary in General and now as the Executive Council member. Today, we are so honored to have Professor Pu with us to present the topic, adipose tissue-based techniques in cosmetics and the reconstructive field. Also, three experienced experts are invited to the panel, uh, Professor Su Hong Huang from Kaohsiung Medical University, Professor Howard Chen and uh, Professor Frank Chen from Changdan. Can't wait to learn from Professor Pu's presentation. Uh, Professor, please, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, good night, good evening, or good morning, maybe, everyone. Okay, thank, thank you, Dr. Joe's introduction and invite me to here to have a talk through the web. The web. So now I will share my file first, okay? Yes, please. Okay, can, can everyone see yes. my file? Yes. And yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. My name is Chi Ming Pu from uh, Department of Plastic Surgery, Cafe General Hospital, Taiwan, Taipei. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. And I think fat is our best friend, I think. So uh, today my talk is to, uh, topic is to use the adipose tissue based technique in cosmetic and reconstructive field. So let me start. Uh, okay. As a plastic surgeon, okay, we have a privileged experts uh, both in reconstructive and aesthetic surgery field after our training. So we can do both reconstructive and aesthetic surgery field very well. And uh, no matter how reconstructive or aesthetic surgery they were, uh, we can use fat to uh, solve some of the troublesome problems. And deal with fat is our daily work. And we can get adipose tissue from liposuction easily. And we can use fatty tissue, adipose derived stem cells and its derivatives like extracellular vesicles and such as exosomes as a potential treatment modality. So in my opinion, a fat tissue is a treasure for our plastic surgeon. And as we know, the advantage of fat graft uh, include the fat can integrate with facial tissue and it looks natural. 
and fat has long lasting improvement and regenerative potential. So it is the most economic choice compared with other feeder that are expensive and short lasting. But the transplanted fat need appropriate size to maximize the contact surface in order to increase its vascularity and its survival rate. So different size fat should be used in different area. And according to Cohen's paper, there are several different types of fat graft, uh, including uh, the ma macro fat graft. The macro fat is a large, larger than 2.4 millimeter, and it was used in most embraced buttock uh, and body area. And I, I will use it to treat chronic wound, and I will mention it later. And another fat graft is micro fat graft. The micro fat graft size is around 1.2 to 2.4 millimeter. And it was most used in facial area for facial rejuvenation, like forehead, eyelid, perioral or periorbital area. And another one is nano fat. Nano fat graft is almost liquefied and it was used in superficial wrinkles and used as intradermal injection. And all the three types of fat will be discussed later. In preparing fat, I always use centrifugation method to get fat. And the macro fat contain, contains ADSC and it was usually used as reconstruction purpose. And in the report from Mizuno, one gram fat uh, can yield 5,000 ADSCs. So uh, we use it as a reconstructive purpose. And to get micro fat, uh, we harvest fat from liposuction and then we ship the fat one time to produce micro fat through 2.4 millimeter pure lock connector. And the micro fat graft can restore soft tissue volume. And it was usually used in facial rejuvenation and facial contouring. Uh, Professor uh, Lin Cai Mi introduced the math gun two weeks ago in this webinar meeting. And I think this fat injection gun gives us a good weapon for fat injection. And we use the fat meft gun to inject the fat to the area we want to improve. I think this tool is very good for us to have a precise fat injection. And now I introduce the nano fat graft. The nano fat was first published by Dr. Tomner for about 10 years. It is a method of mechanical methods to obtain ADSC uh, instead of chemical method. So it can stimulate the production of collagen one protein and remodel elastic fibers to obtain rejuvenation effect. And it is a liquid-like form and can be used as intradermal or subdermal injection for skin rejuvenation. And after we centrifugate of the lipoaspirate, we will release the bottom of the syringe and wipe away the oil on the top of the syringe. Then we can get the purified fat. Then we emulsify the fat 
by shifting about 30 times through 1.2, 2. and 2.4 millimeter connector. When immersification was done, the fatty liquid was filled over a cartridge with mesh to fill up some debris. We can see some debris on the mesh and we have to remove it. Then we can get the nano fat. And the nano fat was transferred to a 1cc syringe by connecting the two syringe and via the syringe transducer. Then we can get the nano fat. And we usually use 27 or 30 gauge needle for intradermal injection. Uh, this figure shows the nano fat contains no fatty tissue after emuls emulsification processing. And the adipocytes were destroyed during, during the emulsification process. So we can isolate many ADSC from nano fat in previous experiment, like the figure shows here. So actually the nano fat transplantation is a stem cell transplantation rather than a simple adipocyte graft. There are many indications for micro fat and nano fat, just as we mentioned, previous. The mi microfat can use in total forehead rejuvenation, perioral rejuvenation, superficial and deep compartment of the face, and tear traps, uh, orbital depressions, or supratarsal fold deepening. And the nanofat can be used in intradermal injection. Besides, we can apply it, the nanofat, after microneedling or fracture laser treatment for facial rejuvenation. And we can also mix the nanofat into microfat to increase the microfat survival rate. Now let's see what we can use FEGRA in cosmetic field. We can use fake wrap in frontal, temporal area and sunken upper eyelid, tear trap, deformity, and feel the nasal jugular fold or nasal labial fold. And before fake wrap, I will make preoperative marking when the patient in an upright position. Uh, then we can have an accurate injection area, uh, injection site. And we also inject the, inject the patient in he, their sitting position. In this example, after lower breath fluoroplasty, although the baggy eyelid was removed, and the, but the natural jugular fold still persists, persisted here. The patient will not not satisfied with the result. So in this situation, microfat graft is a good solution to fill the depressed fold. And next, I am going to share with you some cases with eyelid rejuvenation. And the first case is a 48-year-old female patient. After lower blood flow plasty, uh, we use 1.5 cc microfat to her right lower eyelid and 2 cc for left lower eyelid. And after one year follow up, uh, still have a good result. The, not only the baggy eyelid improved, but also the nasal jugular fold improved. Another patient after lower blood flow plasty, uh, we use 2cc microfat to both lower eyelid. And after 20 months follow up, 
we still can get good results. And this patient have lower blood flow plasty also. And we use 2.5 cc microfat to her both lower eyelids. And after 30 months follow up, still get good results. And even in this old, older age patient, the mm -hmm. fat graft can have good results. A 78 year old female patient after blood flow plasty, and we use 1.4 cc and 1.5 cc microfat to each lower eyelid. And after 12 months follow up, we are satisfied with the result. On the, not only the baggy eyelid were removed, but also the nasal jugular fold can get very good results. And this is a special case. This uremic patient, he is a 50 year old patient. And after lower blood flow plasty, we use 1.2. 1.2 cc microfat to both lower eyelid. Or oh, in one year follow up, we we'll still have good result. So in this case, we learned even in uremic patient, fat graft can also get good result. And certainly, in other areas, including cheek, frontal, temporal, and mesolabial area we can also use microfat graft in this area. And we can good result. We can get good result also. And this 60 year old male patient, we use microfat graft and total 32 cc transplant, transplanted into his cheek and lower lid nasal labia fold. And after 12 months, the result is satisfied. And this 73 year old male patient, we use microfat grab total 42 cc for almost full face rejuvenation. We transplanted the fat into frontal, cheek, lower eyelid, and nasal labia fold area. And after 20 months follow up, the result is good. And the patient looks younger than before. So this is my suggestion. And how many fat grubs should be used in different areas? Uh, in my opinion, in forehead, uh, maybe 10 to 15 cc microfat graft is enough. And in temporal area, two to seven cc microfat in each side. And in tier 12 and periorbital area, uh, one to 1.5 cc in each side. And cheek area, three to five cc in each area. And nasal area for 1.5 to two cc in each side uh, is enough. That's only my personal experience and my suggestion. And now next, I will discuss uh, the fat for dark circle treatment. Is the fat uh, used for, for dark circle? And the dark circle is a troublesome problem. Although there are many methods to treat dark circle, like, like the slide shows, but there is no good solution to deal with this problem. So in dark circle, uh, we try to use nanofat graft and use 27 or 30 gauge needle to inject into intradermal space and pay attention to not inject too deep into orbicularis oculi muscle to avoid ecchymosis. And the end point is to see the skin branching. And let's see the result. 
Uh, this 52 year old female patient after lower blepharoplasty and the nanofed injection. And two years follow up, the dark circle, circle get improvement. And this 42 year old patient after TCLB and nanofed injection, 18 months later, the dark circle get improved. Another 40 year old patient after TCLB and the nanofed injection, 15 months follow up, the dark circle improved. And this 43 year old female patient after nanofed injection, 18 months follow up, the dark circle improved. So nanofed seems to have the ability to imp improve dark circle, but the mechanism still have to be investigated. Maybe uh, it, is a, it is associated with the ADSC um, transplantation, I think. And we also use nanofed graft for static wrinkles such, such as uh, frown line. In this patient, we use nanofed intradermal injection like the, uh, the slide show here, very superficial intradermal injection with 30 gauge needle to the frown line. And this is after the injection. And after one month, and eight months follow up, the front line improved. But maybe she needs another injection to improve uh, this line. Even this line becomes shallow, but maybe you need another injection. And another patient, after 12 months follow up, the front line also improved. Another patient, after 30 months follow up, the front line improved also. And we also use a nanofed to treat neck wrinkle. And after six months, the neck wrinkle improved. And the scar can also use nanofed to improve the scar quality. After pico laser ablation, we use the ablation first. Then we, and after operation, we immediately inject the nanofed into the intradermal space. And after six months, the scar get improved. Also, uh, in summary, how can we get satisfactory outcome in fat graft? The first, we need to accurate evalua evaluation of involving area and transplant fat into the area meticulously. Second, the volume of fat transplantation in each compartment should be suitable. And third, the technique of fat harvesting and transplantation have to be emphasized to keep better fat, better fat survival rate. And the fourth, the policy of fat transplantation is more conservative, is more better, and never over grafting. And if the fat survive more than your expect, expectation, and you will get into troubles. The last, the mouth gun is an accurate fat trans transplantation device for us to use in enhancing lower blepharoplasty results, especially in nasal jugular fold and tear trough deformity. It can blend the lead cheek junction very uh, useful. So now I'm going to introduce how fat to be used in my reconstructive field. And I use the fat graph uh, Usually it's micro fake, macro fake rub, and it's derivatives for wound, especially for chronic wound treatment. 
In general, we define the wound unhealed for three months as chronic wound. And there are many treatment modalities for chronic wound, include, including many types of dressing and hyperbaric oxygen therapy or negative pressure wound therapy, or even skin graft or flap surgery. But sometimes they doesn't work. As we know, the ADSC is another new treatment method. The ADSC uh, can secrete cytokines such as TGF beta, VEGF, or IGF, etc. And it can enhance human thermal fiber blast proliferation and stimulate collagen synthesis. And it can also differentiate into vascular endothelial cell to increase vascularity. The ADSC uh, was used more and more in, more in many aspects, like uh, it can acceleration of wound closure and can get skin regeneration. And it, it is a, a safe method, but the cost is very high in, uh, now in Taiwan. In previous study, one gram fat can yield 5,000 ADSC. But harvest fat is very easy for us. And the, so the cost is low. So transplant fat maybe can use as a treatment material. Below, I will show you the result of my macrophage graft for some chronic wound. Uh, this first case is a 63-year-old male with diabetes. And he suffered from right arm and chest wall chronic ulceration for six months after PTCA for CAD. And the flow row radiation time is 227 minutes the radiation injury was diagnosed. Many different tracing methods were used, but the result was not effective. Uh, we discussed with the patient and the patient agreed with, the, with fat grafting to the wound area. So we harvest fat from his abdomen and injected four cc to his right arm and 7.7 cc to, uh, sorry, 4 cc to his right chest wall and 7.7 cc to his right arm. And after nine months, the wound getting better. And after three years, follow up, the wound heal without any recurrent. And second case is also a radiation injury patient with diabetic and uremia. The ulcer persisted for eight months after floral radiation in his right lateral chest wall. We inject 3.4 cc fat under the wound and the peri wound area. After two months follow up, the wound healed. And the third case is a case of left heel chronic ulcer uh, for 10 months with Achilles tendon exposure after Achilles tendon rupture repair by orthopedic surgeon. He is also a victim of uremia under regular hemodialysis. And we injected 5 cc fat, macro fat graft in Perry area, uh, like here. And the wound healed in three months and no recurrence in one year. And this is a 43-year-old patient with SLE, 
and another immunocompromised disease. And he got his right leg chronic ulceration for 11 years. Skin biopsy revealed benign skin ulcer. After long time wound management with many kinds of dressing and skin graft, the wound can heal. And we discussed with the patient, he agreed with fat graft. So we harvest the fat from his abdomen and inject 24 cc under the wound and the peri wound area. And the wound, we can see the wound is getting better. Uh, the wound heal nicely in 10 months. So I think macro fat can be considered for difficult wound because of his ADSC contents. And at last, uh, I will discuss the ADSC derivatives exosome to see the function of exosome in wound healing. An exosome is one of the extracellular vesicles. Its size is between 40 nanometer and 100 nanometer. And it contains microRNA proteins, cytokines, lipid, and an added RNA. And these proteins are responsible for the exosome's function. The most important function of exosome is intercellular communication, like substance transmission, signal transmission, cell survival, apoptosis, and cell proliferation. The microRNA in exosome can regulate the expression of target genes in recipient cells. And mesenchyma stem cell exosome can be endocytosed by damaged tissue to restore normal cell function. And the exosome's function can increase fibroblast migration and regulate immune system, and increase angiogenesis, increase nerve genesis, nerve gene regeneration, and affect osteocyte metabolism. This is our experiment about exosome in fibroblast migration. Uh, the wound closure rate is higher in fibroblast treated with exosome, especially in treated with exosome from non-obese patients, non-obese donor, which uh, non-obese donor means the BMI is lower than 25. And this is the last slide. Uh, this is a 43-year-old patient with SLE. And he got, uh, she got his, sorry. Oh, sorry. The last I will show you uh, one case treated with exosome. A 78-year-old patient, and she has diabetes, PAOD, and uremia under regular hemodialysis. And she suffered from right fourth and fifth toes gangrene. After toe amputation, the wound showed bone exposure here and poor granulation. Uh, after I discussed with the patient and her family, uh, they agreed to use this kind of treatment. So we spray exosome on the wound every day. And after 30 days, the wound shrinkage with good granulation tissue. And in uh, day 50, the wound almost healed. So I think exosome can be a high potential for cell-free therapy for wound, but we, we still have to invest in the biosafety of exosome. In summary, the fat can be uh, used in both reconstructive and cosmetic fields, but more experiment and evidence should be uh, investigated. And thank you for your listening.
and attention. And please raise your question. Thank you, Avery. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Pu, for your um, very, uh, very detailed lecture on various types of fat grafting and also their applications. Now, before we head to our Q&A session, I'd like to invite our panelists for some comments. And our first uh, panelist is Professor Huang. Professor Huang, would you like to give Professor Pu some comments? Thank you, uh, Professor Pu, for an excellent presentation. And uh, it's a very funny now. The background can do a lot of work in the party of cosmetic surgery field. And um, I'm very curious about uh, the color wound. Uh, in the, now the cell therapy that will be treatment, treatment in every month, but we just do once in the, the chronic wound with the big uh, how, how about this? Can you comment about this? Sorry, can you repeat? <laughs> I can hear very clear. Yeah, that means uh, how many how many sessions do you need to treat the chronic wound? Yeah. In the big button. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Doctor Huang. Uh, in my in my cases, like I show you in the slide, uh, this patient will only have one session of fat grafting. So I'm so surprised that the, the fat graft can get such a good result. Uh, we uh, all of the, the four patients only have one session of fat graft. But I think if the uh, over three months, the wound not get improved, maybe we can try a second time fat graft or even third time fat graft. Yes. But if the fat graft is not work very good, maybe the stem cell therapy is, is uh, another choice. Thank you. Yeah. In my clinical practice, I, I, I get the same experience like, a, like a, the Professor Poo. That's just once once time our big that will be improved a lot in the current wound. But maybe I will try second when the wound still thick. So maybe we, I, I will uh, sprint to the patient. Maybe you can receive the another one after one or two months. Thank you, Professor Poo. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Huang. And our next speaker is uh, Professor Chen. Professor Howard Chen, would you like to raise some comments? Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Chen from Changge Memorial Hospital, Kilong. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tu, for your uh, very comprehensive talk. Uh, very nice talk, I really uh, enjoy very much. Uh, because I'm a craniofacial trauma surgeon, so um, as a craniofacial trauma surgeon, I also agree the fat graft transfer uh, is also a very powerful method uh, for the treatment of facial trauma patients, especially um, for the facial asymmetry caused by uh, inadequate uh, reconstruction of soft tissue um, atrophy or fibrosis after the repeat uh, soft tissue uh, manipulations. But because of fake graft resorption, um, surgeons often use uh, over injection to overcome this problem um, during the surgery, uh, especially uh, for the reconstruction. Um, so my question here is, will you suggest over injection of the uh, fake graft uh, for uh, facial reconstruction? And also, is there any uh, different considerations of fake graft injection for the different anatomy of the face? Uh, such as periorbital area, temporal, medar, or chin areas. Uh, so will you use different types of fake graft, uh, like a nano fake or a micro fake uh, for a different anatomy of the face? And also, can you find the fake graft uh, is not uh, is still not enough uh, to treat the uh, facial asymmetry uh, because of the fat graft resorption? How long will we do the um, second injection? Uh, three months? six months or longer. Thank you. Can you come on a little bit on this? Thank you, Dr. Pu. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Chen. Uh, 
overgrip. Uh, mm. uh, I think we have to divide the, the your. Uh, what do you want to uh, overcome the problem? If in reconstructive surgery, I think over overfed graft is necessary uh, because of the fat resorption. Yes. Uh, but if uh, but the resorption resorption rate is depends on individualized person. So we do not know uh, who will resor resorption more or less. So in reconstructive surgery, I think overgraft is is necessary. But in cosmetic surgery, I think more conservative is more better because overgraft once the fat fat survive very very good uh, there will a bump in like like the nasal jugular for or periorbital area they will let you get into trouble so i usually don't overgrab in cosmetic surgery but i overgrab in uh, reconstruct surgery patient yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's the first question mm -hmm. and in uh, in cranial facial surgery, uh, the, in face, I think the, the in different area, I usually, I always use the micro fat, uh, and if I want, the, I wish the the uh, transplanted fat survive survive more and more, then I will mix the nano fat into the micro fat to get more uh, fat. A survival rate. And the last question is I usually usually evaluate the, the fat grab effect in three months. After three months, if, if the uh, fat resorbed, then I will regrab again. Yeah, that, that's my answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Pu. I also agree with you. They, um, we should do differently. Um, between the uh, for uh, reconstruction, pur uh, reconstruction purpose and cosmetic purpose. Uh, for reconstruction, uh, I also do the uh, over injection uh, to uh, overcome some uh, fat resorption problem. But for the cosmetic uh, um, patients, uh, I think um, we should be very, uh, uh, very careful about the over injection because uh, we can do um, the second, the third injection um, uh, for the patients. Uh, here I also have the second question is about the um, handling of the fake graft uh, during the operation. Because we know the uh, fake graft survival is always a very hard issue. So uh, Dr. Pu, can you uh, comment a little bit on how you improve the uh, survival rate of the fake graft, uh, of the uh, graft handling during the uh, surgery uh, to improve the um, survival rate of the fake graft? Thank you. Yeah, I I always uh, use the stand, standardized uh, fat grab um, methods. I, I uh, use the centrifuge method. I know mm -hmm. someone don't use centrifuge the fat, but I think the centrifuge can uh, get the pure fat than not centrifuge the fat. So, and, and then I will uh, wash the fat after I sent you huge and and then I whip out whip off the top of the oil uh, the, the oil and the fat on the top of the fat we should remove the oil because the oil has many inflammatory um, material inside the oil it will interfere the fat crop survive. Yeah. And th that's my usually to in fat graft to increase the fat graft survival. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Professor Chen. And next, um, our next panelist is Dr. Frank Cheng. Professor Cheng. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Pu. I really enjoy your talk and very uh, good result. Congratulations. Uh, however, I have three questions. Uh, 
the first question is, is that uh, you use mafkang. If you use mafkang in the very precise delivery of parcel fat, uh, can you uh, tell why you emphasize macro fat injection, not uh, with macro fat? Yeah. You use micro for the face. Second, I saw you you have two cases with whole face injection with very uh, good result. In these two cases, do you only use fat or do you combine with other modality like laser or Botox? And the third, um, third question is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you explain that you you combine pico with fat injection. Uh, however, our uh, cosmetic uh, center do not allow us to move the pico way or pico sure, because there's one instance that uh, the laser uh, the in removal because of shaking we have to uh, recalibrate the machine. And it cost three hundred thousand NT for the adjustment. So can you uh, tell us how you are secret that you combine pico with the fat injection, especially for lower lip? Because if you do it laser under local, but however fat is uh, general or uh, or uh, IV IVG anesthesia. Can you do it both in your units? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chen. Uh, the last question I answer first. Uh, in, in the slide, I show the patient with PICO ablation after PICO ablation, and we inject nanofat into the scar. Uh, in my institution, uh, the PICO material is just the Laser is just uh, beside my operation room. And the patient is, we, we usually do the fat graft in local anesthesia. So I will uh, liposuction the patient and get the nano fat. Then we do the PICO operation for the scar. And after abrasion, we inject the nano fat immediately. So I usually don't do this kind of, sur the sur this kind of fat graft surgery in general or IVG surgery. So we don't have to move the pico laser in my institution. Uh, yeah, that's my lucky. Okay. And uh, the second question is the whole face rejuvenation cases. Uh, in these two patients, I only inject microfat grub, and we don't combine with other kinds of or laser or other kind of uh, material like nanofat or PRP. Yeah, we only grab with microfat grub. And I, I have to mention that in my experience, uh, in face, the frontal area will uh, have the best, survive, best, best survival rate in my experience. Yeah. And the, uh, the first question is why I use math gun for, for face rejuvenation, for face graft. Is it correct? No, uh, my question is, uh, when you use muff gun, the delivery parcel is accurate. Why you emphasize macro fat? If you use uh, macro fat yes. with muff gun, you can have the same result with micro fat with muff gun. I think similar. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Uh, in my experience, I have some bad experience using the uh, ma macro fat uh, to 
inject through mouth the gun uh, because the, the macro fat will obstruct the needle, the syringe. So I cannot inject out the too large parcel. So I, I usually uh, trans, uh, transfer the macro fat into the micro fat. Then I can inject more uh, uh, meticulously and the most more good, good experience. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Very good result. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Chang. And um, before we head to the Q&A session, I'd like to invite Professor Low for some comments. Professor Low. Uh, yes, hi, Dr. Pu. Thank you hey, Dr. for Lo. your presentation. The result is nice. Uh, I, I do like to uh, hear your opinion about the facial scar because I, I treated a lip scar a lot. How do you uh, do the fatty injection in the scar tissue in order to improve the scar? I'd like to hear your technical detail. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we know the scar tissue is usually very tight and tense. So uh, in, in the uh, slide, I just showed you the case. Uh, the scar is only a little bit depressed. So the, and the scar, I, I feel the scar is soft. So after a bra uh, laser abrasion surgery, I can inject the nano fat directly into the intradermal area and then can get the good result. But if the scar is too deep, depressed, uh, very deep and the, the scar is very tight. Uh, usually I will uh, use the syringe or uh, some blunt, blunt tip syringe to uh, tunnel in the, the, we call the, we tunnel in the scar. Yeah, then we can get a uh, space for injection. And usually the depressed scar, I will inject the micro fat microfat into the tunnel. We call this subsession, like subsession method. Uh, we have to uh, create a space to uh, put the fat into the space and to correct the depressed scar. And then we can use the ablation laser to treat the surface. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Lo. And next, I think we'll move on to the Q&A session. And our first question is from Professor Zhou. And his question is, where is the donor site for fat grafts in patients with uremia? If it's from the abdomen, is there any key points that should be emphasized when we're doing the fat harvesting? Yeah. In my uremic patient, uh, this patient, it, these patients always use the hemodialysis. So uh, I always use the abdomen as the donor site. And I think there is no difference between the normal person and the uremic person when we do the type of suction from their abdomen. But if the patient uh, use the uh, CAPD for mm -hmm. dialysis, and there, there will be a tube in his abdomen. Then I will, I will use the thigh as the donor site. Does this answer your question? Yes, thank you, Professor Pu. Okay, and then the next question is my question for Professor Pu uh, regarding nanofat. Since we're injecting stem cells rather than adipose cells, so how much should we inject? To, and then how do we know when, how much is enough? Uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, 
nanofat injection, we usually, we usually inject the nanofat in very superficial area, like the intradermal or subdermal area. Uh, and I will look, uh, observe the skin when I inject the nanofat into the intradermal space. I will see the skin if the skin, skin become whiter or blanched uh, appear. Uh, uh, if the skin become white, I think the, the volume is enough. Then I will inject another side. And the branching will be, uh, come, the color, skin color will come back very soon because the nano fat is a liquid form fat. Okay, thank you. And our next question is from Dr. Natalia. And um, the question is, do you choose specific donor sites for specific areas? And she wants to is ask especially about the nasolabial fold. I always uh, use the abdomen as the donor site. Uh, uh, if the up, I, I will not use another donor site for the nasal labial area. I think the first donor site I choose is abdomen. Yeah. Okay, and our next question is from Professor Honda. Um, when you apply fat graft for chronic wounds, what is the appropriate timing for the injection? Do you apply it simultaneously with the um, debridement or is it better to apply it at a separate session? Okay, thank you. Uh, I, uh, yes, the, the wound, the chronic wound will, before we do the fat graph, I think the chronic wound has many kinds of, of treatment before. Uh, so when many kind of treatment is not work, uh, so then I will tell the patient uh, if you want to receive the fat graft injection, and I will if if the patient decide to have the fat graft surgery, then I will debride the wound and do the fat graft in the same time. We will not. Uh, separate the uh, the operation. So I will, I usually will uh, do the liposuction first because the wound is usually dirty. So I will liposuction first, then I will handle the uh, processing the fat first. After the fat is ready, then I debris the wound and then inject the wound. And the uh, the fat, how uh, how many fat will we inject? I will inject into the wound until I cannot inject anymore. So the wound area is feel very tight. Then I will stop the in fat injection. Okay, and our last question is from Dr. Ahmed. And the question is, um, what is your experience with post-burn scars? Uh, Actually, I don't have the burn scar for fat graft, uh, but I, I do have radiation injury scar. Uh, but the radiation injury wound and the scar, I th the, the scar, uh, the wound will heal by after fat graft, like I showed you uh, before. But the, and the scar is very soft after fat injection but I don't have the experience about the post-burn scar. But in my opinion, I think the post-burn scar will uh, have also a good uh, result in scar quality, I think, in, in the paper uh, published uh, we saw. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Pu. Uh, as 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 well, I would like to ask one more question for uh the patient. If once you perform the blepharoplasty as well as the fat grafting, so what is your post-operative the care strategy? Would you recommend or encourage your eyes packing for those patients receiving the fat grafting? So what is your strategy? Thank you. Thank you. 
the actor low blood flow capacity and fake gravity. And I always ask a patient to ask packing also. Uh, because if we don't use ice packing, uh, the eyes will swollen and then the chemosis is very, uh, very, very good. Very, uh, yes. So the patient will not appreciate the procedure. The procedure. So I will encourage patient to ice packing the eye area. But after, I, uh, uh, after seven days, ice packing, uh, I usually do not encourage patient to own packing the fake graft area. Uh, because the, uh, if we, in my opinion, if we increase the uh, vascularity, vascularity by hard packing, uh, the fake will be resorbed more. Yeah, that's my opinion. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Pu. Yeah, thank you and uh, very excellent presentation today. Um, so I now will invite all our participants to uh, open, to turn, up, turn on your screen. And uh, I would like to invite all of you to uh, have a group photo with Professor Pu. Yeah, Professor Honda, happy birthday. Ah, happy birthday to you. Uh -huh. Okay, our superintendent, Professor Chen Chong Chen is online with us. Hello, Professor C.T. Chen. And hello, Chiran Ki. Hello, Aiki. Aiki, Professor Aiki is our future speaker in the ICC and uh, uh, Professor Fayaz as well. So thank you for your coming and uh, thank you for your showing of your all the beautiful face. And I will count to three to give me uh, your excellent smile, please. So one, two, Cheese. Thank you. So thank you very much for your uh, warm uh, uh, come join for the ICC. Uh, next week, we have uh, one more ICC webinar as well. The speaker we invited is from ASMS, American Oral Surgical Society. Uh, the topic probably is in the um, orthodontic surgery is uh, are still um, uh, unknown, but uh, I am still keep contact in because the, I they would like to, to recommend and to promote the the end of the April, the KCPCA at the conjoint meeting with the ASMS. So I would like to say thank you for all the participants to come join for this today's the ICC. And thank you for our three very excellent uh, panel. One is Professor Su Hong Huang from Kaohsiung Medical University. And uh, thank you, Professor Howard Chen. And uh, thank you, Professor Frank Chen. You guys are all very experienced, very experienced uh, Fed expert. And uh, final, I really appreciate Professor Pu. It's a very excellent speech. So good morning and uh, good morning. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Natalia. Bye bye. See you next time. Okay, Cecilia Junior. Yep. See you tomorrow. See you too. Bye. Bye bye.